That's my spark. My name is Devin Wynn, welcome to 11% Tutorials. Today I'll be teaching you guys how you can create this trippy looking freeze frame effect. This effect is based off of Cole Bennett's 1984 Glade music video. I just love this effect and the way that it looks. And the best part of it all is that it can all be created with Premiere Pro. This effect was also used in Ariana Grande video back in 2018, but the effect version that we'll be recreating is from Cole Bennett's one. Like I said, all you'll need for this effect is Premiere Pro, no plugins required. But before we get to editing, all you'll need to create this shot is a tripod and preferably a high quality camera. I shot it at the highest quality my camera could go, which is 4K, because we will be doing a lot of cropping in this effect. I went outside basically, set up my tripod somewhere, most importantly that it doesn't move nor does your background move and pretty much the lighting can stay the same. I just filmed myself just doing a whole bunch of random dance moves. And then with that clip, I was ready to start editing. But before we get started, if you guys haven't yet, please make sure you like this video and subscribe. It's free, all this content is free, so it would really mean a lot if you guys could. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into this tutorial. All right guys, so now that we are finally in Premiere Pro, and the first things that you wanna do is drag your clip into your footage. I am over here and I have a 4K footage file, but this might not apply to all of you, but if you are shooting on 4K and this is the first time that I've actually edited on this computer with 4K. So my playback became quite choppy. Right now it's actually doing pretty fine, but once I started applying some effects, it got pretty messy down the line. So one of the first things I'm gonna do is quick mini bonus lesson to those of you shooting on 4K is we are going to create a proxy. If this doesn't apply to you and you guys are not shooting in 4K, then you can go ahead and skip to this mark time frame. So basically what a proxy is, is it is a lower quality version of the same file, but it allows me to edit it at a lower quality version and then we'll save that 4K later until I export and then I just get the whole full 4K exported version. Is I'm gonna come over here to our project library, I'm going to right click the footage that we use and then I'm gonna come over here, scroll all the way down to proxy and hit create proxies. Now, as you can see, we're, I'm gonna set this format to QuickTime and then ProRes Medium Proxy, that works. And then I'm going to set a location where I wanna save it as, and I have a proxy folder created already. So I'm just gonna select this folder and then hit OK. Now, Adobe Media Encoder is going to open up and what it's basically gonna do is it's just gonna quickly render out this footage as a low quality version that we can use in Premiere Pro. Now that it is done, if we come back to Premiere Pro, we can see that we have this little proxy icon right here. I have this proxy toggle proxy icon in my bar right here. I don't know what bar you call this, but you can add it by hitting this plus button and it should be in one of these and you hit OK. I'm just gonna turn this on and that way we have a low quality version of our footage now. Now you can't see it, but it, they do do a pretty good job. So this is a low quality version that we're editing with. And then we have the 4K one that is going to export with. Boom, basic mini proxy lesson. All right, so now that we have our footage in, everything loaded in is we are going to duplicate our layer and we're gonna duplicate them as many times as many uh, freeze frame duplicates we want. So I'm only gonna do two for now, just, just because my computer almost literally exploded earlier when editing this. So I'm gonna hold option and drag up option and drag up. So now you can see we have three duplicates of the same footage. So I'm gonna scroll throughout this clip and then find some areas where I have some cool freeze frames. This one right here looks cool. And before I move on, we're gonna use the add frame hold effect. But what I noticed is that the add frame hold effect is kind of dumb, but it freezes the frame ahead of time, not before. So I'll just show you guys an example. So we're gonna right click this footage and then we're gonna scroll all the way down right here and then we're gonna hit add frame hold. Now you can see it split this clip. Now, the, the first half of our, our clip is moving and then it freezes right here. We want the freeze clip before. So what I'm basically gonna do is I'm just gonna drag this over and then trim it down to the bottom layer and then delete the moving one. And now you can see we have a frozen clip and then I just pick up moving. I'm going to find one more freeze frame. This one right here looks pretty cool too. <laughs> Look pretty crazy. So then once again, I'm gonna right click this and hit add frame hold and now you can see we have the add frame hold after i'm just going to drag this over to the start of the clip until it so it picks up and then i'm just going to delete the moving version and then extend this all the way down now you can see we have two frozen frames of our subject right here now comes the easy part favorite part least favorite part but it's pretty simple masking what I'm gonna do is I'm going to zoom all the way in. I'm gonna go to like 100% right here. And now you can see we have that quality loss. This is where all that quality is going. It's in these smaller details. I'm going to click the opacity tool right here. Make sure you're selected on the 
top layer that you're going to mask out. And now we're just going to basically just mask out our subject. Now, it doesn't have to be like 100,000% exactly precise, but you know, the more precise, the better the effect. Now that we have masked out our entire full frame subject, you can see we have our character, two characters now frozen right here. We have two of our subjects and it's pretty cool just standing here frozen. And now we're just basically gonna do that again or for however many frames that you have frozen. So I'm just gonna come over here to this frame and I'm going to do the exact same thing. So zoom in and mask out our subject. All right, now that we're done with masking the second character, now we have two of our characters and we have our moving subject, so everything is all in frame. Before we move on, I wanted to highlight on the preciseness. So you can see it right here in this frame, if we zoom in, this t-shirt right here is not masked entirely. So we have a little bit of edge of the fence right here and it just kind of creates this little weird imbalance. So that's where you would come in and adjust some areas that need to be a little bit more precise and you can lay off in some areas that don't need to be super precise. And now if we step back and look side, you can see we have a nice clean cut of our subject right here and there's not too much clipping. And if we go back into our full frame right here, you can see our subject plays out nice and well and then just perfectly lines up with each of the frames. And now you can see we pretty much have the basic effect right here. And now for all the fun details. Now, one of the most key things about this effect is that there is camera movement. In the actual music video, there's actually a lot of camera movement. I think this shot actually might have been shot all handheld and this might have been done in After Effects. But for the sake of doing it all in Premiere Pro, we are just going to be adding fake camera movement. So one of the first things that we're going to do is we're going to come back over here to our library and we're going to hit this layer, this new layer icon, and we're going to hit add adjustment layer. Hit OK, make sure the sequences match the settings and drag this all over our <clears throat> footage. Now we're going to come over here to our effects and we're going to type in transform. Now this is where things might get a little bit messy here in terms of rendering. We're going to hit a scale keyframe and we're going to drag this all the way to the very end of the adjustment layer and then we're going to zoom all the way in right here. We're also gonna hit a position keyframe, drag that one all the way to the end, and then we're gonna adjust the first one to match, uh, to, to align up with our subject. And now you can see when the video plays out, we have a nice little movement going on right here. Now, of course, this still feels a little bit too computer to me. So what I'm going to do is I am going to add just a little bit of camera shape. Now, I do have a couple camera handheld movements, presets downloaded. I will link to some of these. I got some of these for free, so I'll link down below to where you can download for free yourself. But if you're going to create all the handheld movement yourself, the best way is through position. It doesn't take too long, but it does take a little bit of uh, effort, is you just go throughout and just shake the camera. So I'm just gonna move this camera, move the position a little bit down, right, and then we're gonna do up, left, just like completely random movements. And then once we get a couple keyframes going, let's do something like that. You can see we have a nice little camera shake going on right here. So then once we have a couple keyframes down, I'm just going to copy them, Command C, and then paste. And then move out and paste. And then we are going to come all the way here to the very end keyframe and then hit revert back to reset everything normal. Delete a couple of these and voila. Now we have, as you can see, we have a nice little camera shape going on right here. If things still feel a little bit too computer for you or there are a couple hard shakes like right here, this one's kind of crazy. You can just come over here, of course, and just adjust them. So that one was just too close to the other one and just kind of created this little harsh keyframe movement. Also to add some fluidness to this, we can select all of them, right click them, and then hit Bezier. So that way it just adds a little bit of smoother movement to the camera shakes. 
we are going to add some of the last final details, which I think add and just tie in this effect together is the blurs and the depth of field. So as you can see, if we were filming this with a real camera, and I don't know for whatsoever reason, they were just frozen subjects in the frame, they would not be in focus if they are on the left side of this scene or you know behind or in front of the camera. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add that blur ourselves. So we're gonna type in Gaussian blur. And then we are going to drag this to both of our freeze frames right now. What I'm gonna do is for some of the beginning frames is I'm gonna come over here to the very start of the, of the frames and then we're gonna hit a keyframe on the blurriness. Right now I'm selected on this bottom, on this, top, on this outermost layer right here. So this is the one closest to us. So I have this zero blur uh, keyframe set and I'm gonna move it just a couple hundred keyframes out and then I'm just going to increase the blurriness to about 28. That feels, a, that feels like a good amount out of depth. Now you can see we have a nice blur but the edges are still a little bit too sharp for the blur and it just kind of uh, betrays the effect we're trying to go for. This can easily be achieved by adjusting the feather. So I'm just going to take this feather and then drag this keyframe out until it, it lines up with this, with this zero Gaussian blur right here. And then I'm just going to increase the feather to about 34, a good amount where the blur feels natural. And now you can see as our subject gets closer, it becomes out of blur and our subject lines up with our frame again. Now this could of course be done to this other subject right here, but because it is closer and more, uh, it's closer to the subject in focus, we don't have to add too much blur, but you know, for our sake, we could just increase the blur just a tad bit. So I'm just gonna add the zero keyframe for the blurriness, increase the blur up to like 16 or whatsoever. That feels a good amount out of focus. And then you can see it just easily, quickly becomes in focus. And there we have it. Here is the final effect. If you guys made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. I hope at the end of this, you'll be able to walk away with an effect that you can use for your future projects or music videos. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please make sure to leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. If you haven't yet, please make sure that you hit the like button and subscribe. It would really help this channel out. Also, if you guys created anything cool, please make sure to add us on Instagram at 11%prod. We'd love to see what you guys make. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.